All right, so for this second video in the Solving Trigonometric Equations series, we have to take a look when omega is not equal to 1. Now, some books have the omega as the coefficient in front of theta. Now, in the book that I'm currently using, the a is the amplitude in front of the trig equation. Then we have the earth theta and the number in front or uh, the, the number in front of theta when there's actually no number there is 1. We can't actually consider that a 0 because that would just take the whole equation out. So if the number in front of theta isn't 1, it's usually given by the Greek letter omega, but in this book it's given by the American letter B. Now sometimes you have a phase shift which is minus C, and this whole thing would be in parentheses because you can also have a vertical shift which is D. Now again, some books have this as alpha, omega, phi, and beta. But in this book, they use a, b, c, d. And since these are all set equal to something, sometimes zero, sometimes a non-zero number, these are all equations. So in this situation, we have a half angle, or I can write this as the sine of one half theta equal to one half. So what we're going to need to solve this equation is we're going to need our knowledge of general um, equations or the general function for uh, you know, a, a, a trigonometric equation. We also will definitely need our unit circle chart. So be sure you have this handy as well. So let's begin. Now in the previous video, we looked to see when the sine of theta e you know, was equal to one half, but we don't actually have theta now we have one half of theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute for just a moment, I'm going to substitute that instead of I'm going to instead of my one half theta, I'm going to set my theta equal to the one half or the number in front of theta. Now what then I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see when is the sine equal to one half between zero and 2 pi. So I'm going to go around the unit circle and look at all of my values for sine and see when sine is equal to 1 half. Now if I look here, I can see that sine is equal to 1 half at pi over 6. I can also see that sine is equal to 1 half at 5 pi over 6. But there's nowhere else on the unit circle where sine is equal to positive 1 half, so these are my two options. So pi, sorry, theta, excuse me, is equal to pi over 6 plus 2k pi, which means that every periodic um, function of pi over 6, so in 360 degrees, it'll be equal to that 1 half again. Also, at 5 pi over 6. So here I'm writing my general equations for when the sine of theta is equal to one half. But you'll note my problem that my sine that my theta isn't actually just theta, it's theta divided by two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything here by two. What this is going to do is this is going to give me exactly what I need to get me to um exactly what I need to get me um the right spots on the circle. So if this is technically theta divided by 2, if I want to get rid of that division of 2, then I am going to multiply this whole equation here by 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this side by 2, and I'm going to multiply this side by 2 as well. I'm going to multiply this by 2, and multiply this by 2. And this will give me the theta I was looking for. The theta now is 2 times pi over 6. Now 2 pi over 6 is the same thing as pi over 3. So again, off to the side if you needed to see that, 2 pi over 6 is equal to pi over 3. And 2 times the 2k pi is going to be the 4k pi. Okay? And here, the 2 times the 5 pi over 6 becomes 10 pi over 6 which I can simplify down to 5 pi over 3, and then multiply 
whoops, forgot my pi there, 2 times the 2k pi is going to be 4k pi. So what I have now is I have an answer for my theta in the problem that it's going to be pi over 3 and 4k pi, repeat repetitions after that. So I'm going to write down the pi over 3 and think to myself, does repetitions of 4k pi get me between 0 and 2 pi? And the answer is no, because 4k pi is 4 times around the circle, which is definitely, uh, actually, 4k pi is 2 times around the circle, which is not between 0 and 2 pi. So this is the start of my set notation for the first answer. Now, this 5 pi over 3 plus 4k pi, well, 5 pi over 3 is definitely between 0 and 2 pi, but 4k pi is 2 spins around the circle, and that's too far. In fact, a lot of times what I try to do is I look at this denominator that's in these problems here, and I say, okay, I can have a denominator of 3, and if my numerator is 6 or more, so this becomes the danger number. This becomes the number that's too big, because this would be bigger than 2 pi. So now that I'm at 5 pi over 3, it looks like I'm at the end of my solution set for this sine of theta divided by 2. So to review the steps, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to basically drop all the modifiers off of theta and find out when theta is equal to that value. Once you've found those values, and I'll show you those in yellow, once you've found those values on the unit circle, then you have to put back your modifier onto the theta. Then we'll use an inverse operation to get rid of that modifier, but that changes your equation over here on the right. Then you test to see if these values are between 0 and 2 pi and list them as your possible answers. So this is going to take a little bit of practice, so let's do three more of these just so you can get pretty comfortable with these before the other normal examples come back into play. So here I have a double angle and the sine of 2 theta is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, step one. The first thing you want to do is set your theta equal to negative 1 half. And we should look at our unit circle for all the times when the sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So on my unit circle, the sine of theta is negative 1 half at, uh, let me see here, looks like at 7 pi over 6 and also 11 pi over 6. Okay, so now what we do is we write down that theta is equal to 7 pi over 6 plus 2k pi because that's our general equation for anything that isn't tangent or cotangent and also 11 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. Now, you'll note that we did this for theta, but the actual problem is a 2 theta. So how do I get rid of a multiplication of 2? Now, I know a lot of you want to say I'm going to divide by 2, but that's going to be kind of difficult. So instead of dividing by 2, I like to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by 1 half. So this is going to get multiplied by 1 half, and this is going to get multiplied by 1 half. What that does is it turns our 2 theta of this problem just into normal theta, which is great. But we do have to distribute this 1 half correctly to these expressions, or these terms here. So the 7 pi over 6 times 1 half is 7 pi over 12, because 7 times 1 is 7 and 6 times 2 is 12. So this becomes 7 pi over 12 plus 2k pi times 1 half is then just k pi. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here. Distribute the 1 half to the 11 pi over 6 which becomes 11 pi over 12 and then the 1 half times the 2k pi which just becomes k pi. Now we do have to be very careful because we are going from 0 to 2 pi which means that since our denominator here is 12, our danger number, the number we can't go over, 
is going to be 24 twelfths. We can't go over 24 pi or actually even match 24 pi over 12 because we're not actually going to be able to touch the 2 pi. So we're looking for any numerator that's less than 24. Well, it looks like our, my first iteration here at 7 pi over 12 is definitely under 24 pi over 12. And so is this. Our 11 pi over 12 is also under 24 pi over 12. But these aren't your normal answers. These aren't just your only answers. You see this k pi? k pi are basically means intervals or units of pi if k is an integer. That means we can add 12 twelfths pi to the 7 pi over 12 and we can still be with inside our limit for our 0 to 2 pi um, criteria. So 7 pi over 12 plus 12 pi over 12 makes a total of 19 pi over 12 and 19 is less than 24. We'll do the same thing for this one because k can be 1 and that k can also uh, be 0 so that would give us our 11 over 12 but now since k is 1 12 over 12 and 12 over 12 and 11 over 12 make 23 over 12. Now if we go another spin or another interval of k for either the 7 pi over 12 or the 11 pi over 12 we'd be over 24. So therefore this is the set of all answers between 0 and 2 pi for this double angle formula. Okay so now we're on to part c we're actually on a cosine this time. So let's go check out cosine and find out when cosine is equal to 1 half. So when is cosine theta equal to 1 half? Um, there's going to be two answers for these. So it looks like cosine is equal to 1 half at pi over 3. And cosine is also equal to 1 half at 5 pi over 3. So we move back to this problem. Okay, so we have cosine equals pi over 3 plus 2k pi. And that's the general formula for, for anything that isn't tangent or cotangent. And here's theta for 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. Okay, but in our problem you see we have a 3 theta there. So I'm going to need a 3 here and a 3 here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to get rid of the 3. And I can get rid of the 3 by multiplying both sides by 1 third. This is going to change your denominators pretty radically and you're going to have to be pretty adept at fractions here because these then would simplify and give me theta. But now we need to, multiplying by both sides by one-third, we need to distribute this one-third inside here and here. So the one-third times pi over 3 is pi over 9. And the 2k pi times one-third is going to be 2k pi over 3, or 2 thirds k pi. Okay, now this pi over 3 times 5 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 9. And then I'm going to add the 2k pi times 1 third, so 2k pi over 3. How cool is that? Looks like we got something really good here. We've got now our two equations. We have two of our possible answers. But again, we have to be careful because we are going from 0 to 2 pi, not including the 2 pi. So we're going to look at our first denominator. And our first denominator has a 9 in it. That means my danger number is going to be 18 pi over 9. Because 18 pi over 9 is equivalent to 2 pi but I don't want to actually get to 18 pi over 9 so as long as my answers are less than 18 pi over 9 they're going to be part of my solution set. So obviously the pi over 9 and the 5 pi over 9 are going to be less than 18 pi over 9. But now what I need to do is I need to add intervals of 2k pi over 3 to pi over 9 and then alternate to 5 pi over 9 and see how many times I can get answers before I hit that number 18. Now for pi over 9 and 5 pi over 9 the k was a 0 for both of these because pi over 9 plus 0 is that and 5 pi over 9 plus 0 is that. 
So, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to make the k a 1. If I make the k a 1, then this 2 thirds gets added to the pi over 9. It'd be probably better instead of writing 2 thirds is to maybe make it a common denominator of 9, so the numerator would then be 6. Because if I multiply 3 times 3, that makes 9, and 2 times 3, that makes 6. So, pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9 makes a total of 7 pi over 9 which actually is under 18. I'll do the same thing down here with this 6 pi over 9. So 6 pi over 9 and then 5 pi over 9 make a total of 11 pi over 9. Okay? So we keep going because if we multiply this, if we turn this scalar into a 2, then it's 2 times 2 over 3. So 4 pi over 3. Now 4 pi over 3 is also, if I multiply that by 3, 4 pi over 3 becomes 12 pi over 9. And 12 plus 1 makes a total of 13 pi over 9, which is still under 18. And the same thing down here, 12 pi over 9, by turning the k into a 2, and then going 2 times 2, which makes 4 thirds. 4 thirds to getting a common denominator with 9 would be 12 ninths. 12 and 5 make a total of 17 ninths. And 17 is still under 18, but that's going to be the end of it. Because if I go just one more spin or one more unit of 2k pi over 3, I'm going to be over my limit. So you might actually take a look at the last two examples here and say, wow, it looks like having 3 theta gives me 6 answers and 2 theta gives me 4 answers this pretty common pattern that theta is going to have two answers and then doubling or tripling theta will then double or triple the quantity of answers. This pattern doesn't work for every single scalar, but it does work for most of them. And usually taking this problem and cutting it in half may cut your available answers in half, but this happened to have two. Now I want to share with you at the end of this video a problem I put on a final exam that I never should have put there. Okay, the problem on this, the problem with this one, and you'll see this in just a moment, was I thought, well, the students will be able to handle dividing by three. Well, you know, the students did a pretty good job setting this equal to one half and finding out that theta is equal to seven pi over six. This is the sine value at negative one half, and also this is 11 pi over six, the sine value at negative one half. Okay, now we saw this up above in part C. So what makes this problem so much worse, and why did, was it a horrible problem for the final exam? Well, let me tell you why it was a horrible problem for the final exam, because students got this far and then still did the problem right by putting the dividing of 3 underneath each theta. They were well prepped for a problem like this, and then they multiplied both sides by 3. Again, the students were well prepped for a problem like this because I saw a lot of students do this work, and then they put the three on the other side, draw the arrows to show that we are changing this equation to theta instead of theta divided by three, and then the seven pi times three over six, that was 21 pi over six, but we could simplify that to seven pi over two, and then this becomes plus six k pi, okay? Because the three times two makes six, and again, 3 times 7 is 21, 21 over 6 is 7 pi over 2. Okay, so again, students weren't making any mistakes yet. Everything was going fine. They were doing the algebra. 3 times 11 is 33, but 33 pi over 6 can be reduced down to 11 pi over 2, if you divide top and bottom by 3, plus 6k pi. So again, I saw a lot of these. The most astute students scratched their heads a little bit because they said, okay, if we're going between zero and two pi, my danger number, if I look at my denominator here, would be four pi over two, because four pi over two is the same thing as two pi. So I can't have any number that's actually at or above four pi over two, but look at my answers, seven pi over two, and 11 pi over 2. We're already over that, and then going 6k pi would be three spins around the circle. So what is the answer for part D? 
The answer for part D, a problem I never should have put on my, <laughs> my test, is no solution. So probably not a question for the final exam because, I mean, that you can get yourself really thinking about. Oh boy, what is the answer there? Well, thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you with the next page and sets of problems on solving trigonometric equations.